Hi, my name is Rachel Gibbs, Extension Livestock Specialist at the Hedinger Research and Extension Center. And today I'll be discussing the importance of managing stress through the backgrounding system to better position your calf crop for success through the finishing phase. First, we'll get into why stress makes such an impact on the overall health and productivity of livestock before moving into what types of stressors that calf may encounter prior to the finishing phase that can predispose them to significant challenges through the feedlot system. And then finally discuss a few management options that producers could consider to reduce the risk of increased morbidity and mortality Mortality associated with stress, uh, which contribute to productivity and economic losses. So when we talk about preparing calves for optimal gains and productivity in the feedlot, it's important to consider the implications of early life stress uh, and stress during the transition following weaning. There's a clear and insignificant relationship between stress and disease or, or perhaps the risk of disease due to physiological and behavioral changes that occur during short-term and long-term periods of stress. In general, we know that any type of stress can elicit a response that includes increased stress hormone circulation, um, including circulating blood cortisol and adrenaline, um, both stress hormones that suppress the immune system, which as you can imagine, increases the vulnerability of that calf to a pathogen exposure and subsequent disease. Behavioral changes are also common um, during stress events, including um, most often reduced feed intake and isolation, which we know alters the nutritional status of health um, of that calf and, and particularly predisposes that animal to disease or at the very least productivity and gain losses. These factors are amplified when stressors are combined, such as when calves are weaned and commingled in confinement with calves from another pasture or operation. So overall, the, the big relationship between stress and disease is that any type of stress that occurs throughout the lifetime uh, of that animal or throughout the production cycle has the capability to reduce um, the immune system or the immune system response, um, increasing the vulnerability and risk of that animal developing and being affected by that pathogen or um, particular stressor. Um, so because stress results in increased susceptibility to disease uh, and changes in feeding behavior related to um, feed efficiency and gain, uh, it may play a significant role in the rising mortality rate of feeder calves despite the development and implementation of effective vaccination protocols and programs um, that have been proven to reduce the impact of pathogen exposure. Um, the graph on the right uh, was recently published by Buddha and others in 2023, who evaluated the death loss rates in Kansas feedlots from 1992 to 2017. Here you can see that over the past 20 to 25 years, we've experienced an increased death loss from slightly less than 1% prior to the year 2000 to nearly 1.4% since then. Um, this, however, doesn't account for death losses before entering the feedlot um, in those backgrounding calves or weaned calves, uh, where we can have the potential to see another 1% to 3% death loss in wind calves. So overall, when we, when we look at a calf crop, we can see an upwards of a 5% death loss, um, but that productivity losses may be even more significant. Um, it's not uncommon for stressed calves with a lower ability to fight off disease, to exhibit reduced gains and poor feed efficiency through the finishing phase, uh, which creates one of two scenarios, increased time on feed or premature marketing, both of which we know impacts the value of that calf costing the production system. Beyond productivity loss um, or productivity losses, it's, it's important to recognize the increased costs associated with maintaining the health of stressed calves. Uh, in 2011, it was estimated the cost of treating calves for bovine respiratory disease or BRD uh, was upwards of $24 per head uh, alone, uh, which due to inflation could be as much as $35 per head per day um, today. And so ultimately, if we can find a way to incorporate low stress management strategies, our calves will be more prepared to fight off disease through the finishing phase uh, and put more money in, in producers' pockets. Um, to develop such management strategies, I think it's really important that we recognize and identify what types of stressors in, in your particular operation 
may play a role in the overall health and resiliency um, or the ability to withstand pathogen exposure or other challenges that that animal may encounter later in the feedlot. Um, this will likely vary from operation to operation, but as a solid list of the types of stress that a background in calf, for instance, will likely be exposed to. Um, adequate ma stress management strategies um, begin long before the calf is born. In fact, uh, researchers at NDSU and elsewhere are just really scratching the surface at the impact of stress on in utero development and the lifelong productivity of offspring. Uh, in particular, we know that early to mid gestation stress impacts the development of the placenta, um, which alters nutrient transport to the fetus in late gestation, resulting in slow growing, inefficient offspring who have reduced carcass quality. So it's really important that we evaluate how the timing of breeding and perhaps the timing of calving affects or determines the risk of in utero stress and long-term productivity deficits for offspring. Fine-tuning these seasons to create low-risk environments for calf development will be critical, especially when we consider the importance of passive immunity transfer or that transfer of productive antibodies uh, immediately following birth uh, through colostrum consumption which can be disrupted by poor calving conditions. For instance, um, it's been known to that dystocia or difficult birth um, can delay calf antibody absorption and transfer of immune factors, which are vital to early life health and resiliency to disease well beyond that early life period. Um, we know, uh, as many of you know, weaning is, is likely the greatest stressor, uh, um, particularly on these backgrounding calves. Um, alongside transitioning those calves to a new diet and environment. So we'll talk about low stress management options that you can consider to, to implement to minimize prolonged stress during this period of calf development. Social stress is also common in young calves, especially when they're commingled for the first time um, and, and weaned into pens of lot or lots that are, have older cattle in them, um, particularly when we think about how calves are competing for feed. So ensuring that bunk space and access to water can help younger calves or weaker calves thrive in, in these backgrounding environments. I think one of the more obvious stressors uh, and an area I've spent a lot of my graduate training in is the impact of environmental stress, uh, which has been well documented in feedlot livestock. So I won't spend too much of my time discussing this, um, but it's important to recognize that that is a stressor that these calves may endure um, during weaning or backgrounding, and, and especially in the feedlot. So ensuring these calves have access to uh, wind or snow breaks in the winter or shade during the warmer months to get out of those direct conditions is always recommended. So what are the signs that your calves may be experiencing stress and, and how does that differ from signs of illness um, which may need to be treated? Particularly in weaned calves, vocalization will be the most common behavioral sign of stress, but often uh, this is associated with a reduced feed intake as well due to the time spent walking or pacing fence lines um, rather than eating. So um, calves experiencing acute or short-term stress often remain alert or on edge, if you will, uh, rather than the lethargic ears down, glossy eyed appearing calves that may be experiencing some type of immune response or stress uh, related to, to an illness. Um, socially stressed calves may self isolate to avoid the overly bunk aggressive calves or the bully calves. Um, and so ensuring ample feed is available throughout the day and calves remain full will help minimize reduce gains of smaller socially stressed calves who are less, less motivated at the bunk. As many of you know um, or are likely aware, backgrounding calves offers a number of benefits to minimizing stress and preparing livestock for the finishing phase. Likely most important, it's, it allows time to recover from weaning stress and allows those calves to ad adapt to a new diet or feeding behavior. Calves are allowed to gradually transition to mixed rations, uh, reducing the risk of nutritional stress, whether that be related to overfeeding or underfeeding, uh, which we commonly see in calves that are abruptly weaned directly into feedlots. This is also a critical time to develop immunity through veterinary recommended 
um, vaccination programs to reduce the risk associated with pathogen exposure common in confined and commingled cattle in the feedlot. Lastly, um, backgrounding provides calves an opportunity to adapt to post-weaning production in a familiar and relatively low-risk environment. Gradual adaption to increase human interaction and handling will also acclimate calves and minimize stress of processing in the feedlot. Lastly, calves are able to adapt um, to new social hierarchies, which will be really important as they move on um, into the feedlot system where they'll be tasked um, to compete with other animals um, for feed resources and, and otherwise. The success of the backgrounding system can really be elevated um, by practicing low stress management of calves um, throughout the production cycle, but particularly through weaning um, by reducing cumulative load stress for those uh, more successful and smooth transmission uh, to that post-weaning production phase. The first of those is to consider is a two-stage weaning strategy um, that divides the primary contributor stress at weaning by first removing the calf's access to nurse uh, and milk availability, and second by the separation from the cow. Uh, while slightly maybe more labor-intensive, the use of anti-suckling nose flaps has been proven to be a significant uh, effective tool to utilize to reduce behavioral signs of stress, including vocalization um, or calves post weaning by as much as 90%. Um, those nose flaps are applied for about four to five days and they restrict that calf from nursing to promote self weaning and transition to feed stuffs. Immediately following nose flap removal, calves are then completely separated and successfully weaned um, in an effective low stress manner. Uh, the second type of weaning, low stress weaning strategy I'd like to discuss is the fence line weaning strategy, which is a pretty popular um, method when fencing infrastructure is available. Typically, a, a tight four to five strand barbed bar wire fence is enough to keep cows and calves separate. Um, sometimes an electric fence can be added to reinforce the barbed wire or woven wire fencing. Um, this method allows calves to have nose-to-nose -nose contact for about five to seven days before completely separating those cows and calves. Um, this particularly uh, a method reduces behavioral signs of stress, including vocalization, uh, and has been shown to improve post-weaning rate of gain compared to abruptly weaned calves. Other considerations at weaning to minimize stress and elevate your backgrounding system include pre-weaning processing of calves, um, whether that be castration, banding, um, branding, vaccinating, uh, and then allowing time for those calves to recover cow side prior to weaning. Uh, another low stress strategy is to allow calves to wean in a familiar environment by removing cows from the environment instead of the calves. Um, and, and this is even the case if, if you need to move everyone to a new weaning lot uh, and then move those cows after a short period of, of acclimation. Um, that's also a successful method uh, in production systems. Uh, lastly, uh, when possible, creep feeding calves will be tremendously improved calf acclimation to feed bunks during backgrounding and provide a base ration um, for the backgrounding phase um, that, that you can build upon. Throughout weaning and, and backgrounding, practice, practicing low stress handling and transport is just really good practice when we, when we think about minimizing the risk of, of stress later on in production. Um, so there's several different things to consider here, but the main thing is to move cattle uh, and calves slow, um, but in an efficient manner. Um, so sorting calves into an adjacent pen in the same direction as cows are headed, rather than keeping them behind and increasing that stress. And so I found this, this diagram created by Dr. Joseph, um, and apologies if I say the name wrong, uh, Stokey, uh, who is a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, but basically it shows us the diagram of bringing those cattle all into a smaller confined pen and then sorting those cows and calves in the same direction. Uh, I thought that was a really unique way and a different way I hadn't thought about before, but uh, something to consider. We're not stressing those calves by trying to keep them back and, and not going in the same direction as those cows. And that, that can be amplified when we use loud noises, um, prods, cattle prods, um, or even the use of dogs, which are a really effective um, 
sorting and, and management tool, but um, for calves can increase the, the level of stress that they're experiencing. Uh, lastly, uh, when we think about low stress handling and transport, we, we want to avoid poor environmental conditions or, or climate conditions. Um, so avoid working in wet, muddy pins uh, where we have an increased risk of pathogen exposure or an increased risk of developing pneumonia and those types of diseases. And then avoiding hot days, particularly in the summer, um, is effective by not combining those stressors where we're already having to handle and transport them. Let's not add in a, an environmental stressor as well. Uh, and, and hopefully that would help minimize that stress wherever that calf is going. And so at the end of the day, uh, unfortunately, stress is inevitable and its relationship to disease and productivity losses in the feedlot uh, make it something that we really should start thinking about um, managing in, in a very systems approach. Um, I think backgrounding is a great way to do that. It manages the system rather than treating the symptoms. Um, and it works by uh, minimizing combined stress um, to improve that animal's ability to fight off disease. Um, so practicing low stress management um, through biosecurity, whether that be um, through veterinary recommended vaccination programs, um, reducing the risk of pathogen exposure by improving biosecurity of your operation, uh, ins and outs uh, and where um, people and trucks can go is, is really important to reduce uh, inviting in new pathogens or, or new diseases to your operation. Uh, low stress weaning and handling, we talked about that quite a bit, um, is, is gonna be really important as we move into backgrounding in the feedlot industry and then finally, minimizing the combination of multiple stressors, as I mentioned, and allowing time for those animals to recover um, from subsequent stress. Um, and that's ultimately how we can improve the health of these backgrounding calves um, and prepare them for the feedlot uh, where they're often challenged with a number of different things. And then finally, I wanted to end with this because I think it's a really cool area that maybe many of you would, would be interested in. And I think there's a lot of potential in the future for new management tools. Some of these are already currently being developed and utilized by companies and researchers. Um, um, particularly to me, I, I have an interest in developing indices to de identify high-risk livestock, whether that be uh, a blood test when they enter the feedlot and, and we can better allocate resources to those high risk animals that are more likely to develop BRD or heat stress or succumb to heat stress and that kind of thing. There are several precision livestock technologies that we can start to think about adding in as um, low stress management techniques, whether that be body temperature and movement sensors to monitor health. Uh, and then I know there's some work going on with some AI and camera tracking systems um, to help monitor health and, and use those resources for operations and in particular the feedlot um, as labor is often limited in those situations. And with that, I, I'll welcome any questions. I know we're online, but feel free to contact me. Um, here's my email and my office phone number. Um, but I also encourage you to contact your local NDSU County Extension agent or specialist um, and they'll be happy to direct you my way or, or be able to answer your questions as well. Um, thanks.